Hi guys, it is Aoife from Words of Clover and I'm here to do my second part of my May wrap up. So I have already done the first part of my May wrap up as May was a really good reading month for me. So I will leave that linked up above if you haven't seen it where I talked about the first half of all the books that I read in May as well as a few library books that I read uh, during the month as well. So the first book I want to talk about is The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot and this is a classic book as you can probably see from the um from the physical book that I'm holding up. So this one is, I was reading as part of a challenge that I've set myself, which is to try and read six books, um, six classic books or six books that are classed as classic books um, during the year. So far, I am not doing so well at that because this is the only one that I've read so far, but I do have a couple on my shelf that I do want to pick up um, soon enough. So hopefully I will get a little bit better at uh, doing this challenge. So this book is a pretty chunky one. It is, I think like almost, it's 530 pages um, and the text is very, very tiny, as you can see. So it took me a while to get through. I kind of just took it slowly because I didn't want to rush it. I did, I wanted to really kind of soak in the story, really try and understand it. Um, and and yeah, I, I don't think this will, I think this will be on my shelf as one of my favourite classic books, to be honest. In this one, we are following two siblings, mostly um, Maggie and Tom. Tom is the older sibling and Maggie is the younger one. And Tom has a lot of ideas of the type of man that he wants to be when he grows older. Father owns a mill and he wants, like, he wants Tom to kind of be more of a scholar rather than a worker where Tom would probably prefer the latter and Maggie is the one who actually would like to be the scholar except because she is a girl it's kind of like her her limits she's really limited in what she's allowed to do and she's very precocious she loves pranking people and she's always getting herself into trouble and we see this um at the, at the, a lot at the start of the book and we see all the ways in which Maggie isn't the the um darling little girl that she is supposed to be and we also see that one of her great loves in life is her brother Tom he is just like her absolute sun and stars she adores him and he kind of he loves her but he also kind of just like puts up with her as any older sibling would but as they grow older and Maggie matures and becomes much more of the type of young woman that her family want her to be Tom is increasingly harder and harder on her in terms of her behavior and um, as their family situation uh, in terms of like their um, their money money problems and stuff comes in and their father uh decides kind of goes through some bad uh like debt problems and makes a lot of bad decisions in which um Tom and Maggie's prospects end up being very very diminished and not the type that they would have wished for their children at all and we see how Maggie kind of really just both of them kind of fortify themselves to the situation and try and do the best that they can but Tom again just like keeps bringing Maggie down all the time and even when she kind of uh, creates new relationships for herself um, Tom is always there to to put her down and to say all the ways in which she's wrong, which she has shamed him and shamed the family and stuff like that. And we kind of just see this relationship um, like through a number of years. This one was fine. I did enjoy Maggie as a character, but I was hoping... We, we see a lot of Tom at the beginning and I would have actually just preferred to have been in Maggie's point of view the, the entire time, I think, in the book. And one of the reasons... One of the things that was hard about this book as well is the fact that... Like so much of Maggie's life is controlled by the men in her life and there's so many decisions that are made about her that she almost like doesn't have any control over Um, in terms of like even how her brother is thinking about her and her brother thinks about like a certain relationship she's in. He never really gives her the benefit of the doubt or never gives her a chance to explain herself and then we also see at some point um, she ends up in this like, I wouldn't even call it a romantic like dilemma or like a love triangle between her her cousin and her cousin's um her cousin's boyfriend and the boyfriend basically ends up like fancying Maggie um when he meets her and kind of like manipulates the situation in which everyone thinks that Maggie had run off with him when she wasn't she was kind of like brought against her will and she ends up being like really punished for this and it really just boiled my blood because I was like she was basically like like she's getting the blame for all of this and she basically didn't do anything in fact she was she was the best in the situation in which she was made sure that she didn't do anything to hurt her cousin and yeah it was just really annoying to read um so I gave this one a three out of five stars it wasn't my favorite classic as I said but I'm glad I read it I'm glad I've read George Eliot because it was my first George Eliot that I read um and I would like to check out more of her writing so if anyone has read more George Eliot and has a um 
like a suggestion of where next to go to uh, I would really appreciate that. The next book I want to talk about is A Tall History of Sugar by Cordella Forbes and this is a historical fiction that is set is taking place in um, Jamaica around I think it's around the 1960s 1970s and we are following um a couple who are struggling to have children and then one day they the woman in the couple she ends up finding this baby um near the the surgery that her and her husband attend to and she ends up finding this baby and fusion about like where he came from who whose biological parents could be him his adoptive mother who finds him Rachel um obviously loves him from the moment that she she sees him she knows that he needs a home so she brings him home and she raises him and we are kind of following the story of this child growing up to become a man friendship with a young girl um, in school called Ariana and the two of them when they meet are kind of like connected straight away they can practically like hear each other's thoughts and like talk to each other without saying anything and they are best friends from the time they are children all the way up to adulthood and we see kind of this like up and down uh, relationship between the two of them and how Ariana loves this boy like his name is something like Moses but I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it so um it's like it's it's kind of a variation of Moses is his name because of how he was found. He ends up going on a journey eventually to try and find out more about his biological parents and he ends up going to London. And we are seeing kind of flashbacks and forward in time in terms of his journey and then also his childhood in Jamaica and then also his relationship with Ariana and how that has gone ups and downs and while he's in London there was like a particular down moment between that relationship. I enjoyed the setting of this book um, in Jamaica but also kind of just like the history the general day-to-day -day life in Jamaica from both sides where um the main characters family are probably more uh like are a lot more poor than uh, Ariana's family Ariana is probably from a more well-off family but we see kind of family dynamics um kind of uh like a childhood growing up in Jamaica and um, in a kind of like a small town in Jamaica and how kind of magical so many parts of it are um kind of school life there as well and then also the effects of uh, colonialism in this community as well um and you know the the relationship with sugar plantations and stuff like that as well and um, which I all thought was really interestingly woved throughout the story what I did find a struggle with with this book was what exactly the book was trying to tell us about our main character about his relationship with Ariana I think halfway through the book there was so much back and forth between um between timelines I was never really sure exactly where we were and it kind of confused me a little bit and I wasn't really enjoying the story as much because yeah I just thought that it just felt very muddied in the middle to the end where um I wasn't really sure again like what what the plot of the story actually was what we were supposed to be focusing on and then there was the added confusion of where in the timeline we were actually um focusing and on at different points it was never really explicitly stated and it would take a while sometimes to try to figure it out which I didn't really like so I gave this like a two 2.5 out of five stars um I did like there was parts of the writing that I did enjoy and I liked the setting as I said and I'd probably read more from the author this, this one in particular just didn't quite do it for me the way I wanted to the next book I read was an audiobook and that was The Coroner's Daughter by Andrew Hughes. This is an Irish book and we are, it's a historical fiction book set in Ireland in 1813 and we are following a young girl called Abigail Lawless who is, I think she's about maybe 18 in this book. Abigail is not really like other girls um that like she would go to school with and that she was associated with because her father is actually the city coroner so she has basically kind of gotten used to being around like dead bodies all the time she's very interested in the macabre um side of life and is also like really interested in science and um like astronomy and things like that and like ma mathematical things and um, she has the brain for that kind of thing and because of how she grew up as well she's very very good at it and she's really really clever but again it's 18 like the 1800s and um, women aren't really encouraged to be scholarly they're not really allowed they wouldn't have been allowed to be doctors so again she's kind of limited in some of the things that she can do and she finds this really really frustrating and she ends up kind of uncovering kind of a mystery when maid servant of one of her neighbors um has a child uh has a child one day and when this child is born the maid servant apparently kills the child the newborn baby and the new baby the baby comes in to the city corner and they're kind of trying to figure out like why someone would do something like this and abigail ends up starting to investigate it and she goes to see this girl in the hospital but then after she sees the girl the girl ends up dying um in mysterious circumstances and abigail feels like there's a lot more to the story that like there seems to be and um, that it wasn't just a case of uh like this woman murdering her child out of in cold blood and then killing herself that there's something a lot more 
like deep and darker going on and she thinks it's related to this kind of kind of religious um movement that's going on in the community at the time with called the brethren ultra protestant cult like uh sect of of the church and um, that are just a little bit troubling and uh yeah not people that you really want to mess with and as she digs deeper and deeper she ends up like kind of uncovering more but then also getting into a lot more trouble and her life like is in danger um because she's kind of uncovering too much and people obviously want to keep things hidden enjoy this an audiobook i thought it was quite engaging and interesting to listen to i really enjoy kind of just like the time period 1800s kind of georgian dublin and some of the uh some of the scenes were set around certain areas that i know quite well so it was just really interesting to be able to to hear what was going on and imagine like imagine the scenes and also kind of imagining what those streets and what those areas of dublin would have looked like way back uh like almost 200 years ago i think abigail is a character again she's a real blue stocking type of character and she's someone like there was frustrating moments where she would like she basically kind of like would run head first into danger and she never really thought about what she was putting herself into and how she was going to get it out of get out of it if something bad happened um but she's like very clever she's very driven and I did quite enjoy um seeing her kind of uncover this mystery and how she went about things I think one of the issues I had with this book is that I feel like there was so many like there's like a, a crime mystery element going on but then there's also a lot of just like historical fiction like general historical fiction story as well and I wasn't sure whether the author wanted it to be like a like a crime book like a historical fiction crime book or just a historical fiction book and there was a there was kind of a bit in in the middle where like Abigail was going to dances and then talking to other people in 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 her um circle in society around uh like uh, astronomy and things like that and it wasn't quite related to to the mystery that was going on and it felt like the the initial mystery the initial mystery of the baby and the housemaid kind of got left behind a little bit by the time the end of the book was happening and I felt a little bit disappointed in that but what I will say I thought it was like I think it was really well written and I think it was really really well researched and um I appreciate both of those things I think I don't think this book was written I think maybe 2015 was published in around 2017 I think and I don't think the author has another book coming out but I feel like this book has like a really good potential of being the first book in like a series where we're following Abigail and a couple of her couple of characters who could like come in and out of the story and could be like main like apprentices or friends of hers or like you know romantic interests and things like that um uh, like and as she like maybe follows other mysteries and other things that happen um like as she gets a bit older as well and I think that would just be really interesting to follow if the author wanted to make this like a series or like a trilogy or something like that I don't know if that will happen I think this might just be a standalone which is kind of disappointing so I gave this three and a half out of five stars I did enjoy it I think if you want a historical fiction set in Ireland and um, this would be a really good one to pick up this book I read was Nightcrawling by Leila Motley this is a book that um was quite buzzed last year um I think it was I think it was uh, shortlisted or longlisted for the Women's Prize last year. And that was when I initially heard about it and I put it on to my TBR list. And then I saw, recently I saw someone else read it and it kind of reminded me that I had wanted to read this book. So I got it from the library. And this is a, like a debut novel. I think the author is like really young as well. I think she's only like in her early 20s or she read, she wrote this when she was maybe still a teenager or something. I'm not exactly sure. But the writing in this and the story in this are like quite dark, um, but really, really impactful. A character called, um, it's spelled Kira, but I think it might be Kiara. Kiara, she lives with her brother. Um, her brother is called Marcus and the two of them kind of are like surviving by themselves, even though um Kiara is under 18, she's 17 at the start of this book. And she her brother is uh wants to become a rapper and he keeps focusing on his music and hanging out with his friends and he's not going out and getting a job to help like pay for food and for rent. And Kiara is starting to get really, really worried about like what's going to happen, how they're gonna pay their rent, and she's also helping to look after the boy next door whose mother is a dr drug addict, and she is kind of helping raise this child as well as trying to like figure out how to survive herself. And because of the lack of support in like basically every single area of her life, Kiara eventually ends up turning to um she eventually ends up turning to prostitution to try and get money to just like pay the rent and to have some food in the cupboards. <laughs> I think this book is just really really impactful I think that the, the writing and the storytelling in it is so powerful I, ma I mainly just felt so so sad in this book by how Kiara was treated by pretty much everyone in her life and it was just and the way she just like when she like realizes that prostitution could be the way out for her when it comes to her money problems and the way she just kind of accepted it and just like let it happen 
was just so sad and so upsetting and one of the upsetting things about it is is that there's so many elements of the story that are just so true to life and there are so many girls out there who are in Kiara's situation who literally have nothing nothing left to do but turn to probably one of the darkest options they have available to them just to survive and like they are just not getting help um in anywhere else and it's just it's just so upsetting to think about and that's what I mostly took away from the story just thinking about all the girls out there who in real life who are Kiara and um yeah it was just it was really impactful and really moving like that so I gave this a four out of five stars would will definitely 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 be watching out uh, for this author and what she brings out next because I think she's someone definitely someone to watch I mean her first book was uh, was already um like no, like sh- short li- or her first book was already long listed for like a major prize so she obviously has some like really good talent there and um I just can't wait to see what she brings out next because I think it'll be really really good the next three books um that I read I actually have a whole video review where I'm talking about all these books because they were all kind of dark taboo romances that I read on Kindle Unlimited so I did a review video vlog um, for those books and that was Hooked by Emily McIntyre, Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman and The Risk by St. Abbey. Um, so I have I have a video which I will leave linked up above where I talk in full about all of those books um, and you will see what I thought about them there so I'm not going to talk about them in this in this uh, video. Next book I read was the next book in the Maeve um, Kerrigan series, a crime series that I am um, reading that I really really enjoy and that was The Kill by Jane Casey. In this one we are following Maeve as she's investigating the um, this murder of a policeman who was shot dead uh, like quite violently in this secluded area of London. As her and her partner um, are investigating this there are a number of other police uh, murders um, and kind of uh, attacks happening throughout the city and it kind of seems that there's someone in particular that seems to be targeting uh, people who work with the police force so Maeve herself could be a target and she doesn't even know it. So this one again was another like it wasn't my favourite in the Maeve Kerrigan series but I still enjoyed it. I always enjoy these books. I always read them really really fast I just find the investigation and I find Maeve herself as a character uh, really interesting to follow and I just really enjoy it this one has kind of like kind of a big moment that happens in Maeve's relationship that it is I think will be explored more in the next book and we'll kind of see the fallout of it but about this thing that happened in this book I can't say too much obviously because of spoilers that I felt kind of came out of the blue a little bit I think it's kind of been used as an excuse to to like to do what the author wants with the relationship so something else can happen um eventually like later down the line in terms of like end goals and end relationship goals for the series and it's kind of annoying because I actually really really like the relationship that Maeve has like at the start of the um the start of the of the series and it's kind of annoying seeing how some of the decisions the author made in terms of how that is going to like that relationship is going to get complicated and um yeah kind of like the the little bombs that she's going to put in that relationship to really test it and um, it's kind of I'm like oh why are you doing that because like, I feel like it would be nice to have them like really stable for, th- throughout the series but yeah so this was fine not my favorite but I still enjoyed it so a three out of five stars and then the last book I read was Pod by Lally and Paul and um, I think I finished this at the very start of June but I mostly read it in May so I'm going to include it in this wrap up. This is a book that is shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year and it is one that is really unusual and I haven't really read a book like this before. Um, this In this one we are following a character who's actually a dolphin and her name her name is ea so i just, i've just been calling her ea i don't know if that's correct um but we're following ea as she lives with her group of um her family group who are spinner dolphins and they are kind of a little bit more of a peaceful like dolphin um species and they love to what they call dance uh, on the waves and they have kind of special celebrations that they that they do and ea is kind of building herself up to this and she's also building herself up to eventually be ready for sexual relationships with other dolphins and eventually maybe become a mother and she's kind of figuring out like what she wants to do there but she is hearing kind of strange noises in the sea and some things happen that eventually ends up with Ia separating herself and um, by accident from her from her family and she eventually ends up being brought into this other dolphin group and um, that exist in the same waters as her and um, that are very very different to her family are quite violent and quite um, extreme in many different ways and we see Ia be violated both physically and sexually in this book quite a number of times and it's quite upsetting to read um but so yes yeah, so it's just a warning that there is kind of like a lot of, kind of like um they're not like extremely 
descriptive but they are there and it's and because she is such a kind of peaceful kind loving creature it's very very hard to um to to see what is happening to her when she's brought into this other this other dolphin group you see how she kind of starts acclimatizing herself to the group and also meets this other dolphin who is actually human trained and has no experiences of other wild dolphins his name is google and she ends up um forming a relationship with google as well and that was just so lovely i loved that moment between the two of them when they first met it was really really gorgeous and how they kind of like danced together in the waves and stuff was just was so so cute this book is very much an exploration of like what humans are doing to the environment and the world but in particular obviously to the oceans there is a scene near the end of this book that is just human cruelty and it's so upsetting to read and it's very very hard to read and then we also see things around like you no know, like um pollution and, and um rubbish in the sea and uh, that's like how bad it is for sea creatures and how it's slowly killing uh, the sea in many many different ways from just like the quality of the water Ia talks about the quality of the water from where she was living with her family to the new dolphin group that she that she joins and how the water isn't nice where they are and she really doesn't like it there's almost like an oily like slick feeling to the water so yeah i think a lot of people struggled a lot with this book i will say it took me about a good 50 pages to really get into it and to really kind of get into Ia's story and figure out what the author was doing with the different creatures that we are following but i genuinely really enjoyed this book um i think it's such an unusual book it's really unique and i don't think i've read anything quite like it before i'll definitely have to read her other book the bees uh but yeah I, even though there's so much kind of there's a lot of violence in this book and a lot of dark things there are also so many beautiful tender moments and gorgeous moments of nature and just nature doing what it does best and um, which is just surviving in the most beautiful ways possible and yeah I, I really enjoyed it in the end and I gave it a four out of five stars. So that's everything I read in May and um, please let me know what you guys think below if you read any of these books. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you guys again next time.